a little here. So here we are on the brand new 2020 Kawasaki Ninja 650. We're gonna have a little bit of power. I've heard this bike called the quintessential starter bike. And for the most part, I would very much agree. I recently rode the Kawasaki 636 and the Kawasaki Ninja 1000. And I must say, as far as the uh, 636, uh, I would consider that a uh, very much a race bike. That is a bike that you want for the track. A bike like this is very much more suited. It's much more rider friendly. Um, you could say it's detuned. Um, as far as the turning, it's much more forgiving. Uh, pulling a U-turn is not as difficult as you would say on a uh, Suzuki GSX-R. Um, but I would say one big major difference is the, uh, as far as the seat. Uh, when riding the Kawasaki Ninja 636, uh, or otherwise known as the ZX6R, um, you're very far forward. Uh, you're in a very much of a position. Uh, I mean, it damn near feels like you're on a Tron cycle. Um, but it is much more, for, uh, it's much less forgiving, I would say, than this bike here. The brakes on this one, pretty good they're responsive uh, they're not touchy uh, as far as the throttle response the throttle response is a little more it feels like you have to give it a little more gas and I feel like I'm hanging out in uh, higher rpms than I otherwise normally would but uh, my my normal daily is a Suzuki GSXS uh, which is a little bit more responsive, a little more touchy on the throttle. Uh, so going from that to this uh, definitely feels, uh, I don't know, I would say like I have to crank it more uh, to really get the speed that I want. So you'll definitely, if you're going from a higher CC motorcycle to something like this, like let's say you haven't ridden in a few years, uh, and you know, you're looking to get back on it. Um, you're definitely going to feel, I don't know, you'll feel, you'll, you'll feel a little bit more underpowered than you normally would. I'm going to give it a little bit here. As you can see, I'm definitely hanging out in that higher power band. 
I'm getting the shift light consistently. Especially on these lighter bikes, you're gonna feel the uh, you're gonna feel the wind a little bit more. Especially if you're on an empty tank. This one looks like about about half a tank, so not looking too bad. I'm gonna whip her around a little bit. about 70 if I slow it down before I get a ticket but right now we're gonna go uh, to one of my uh, one of my favorite spots definitely feel the wind. The idea right now is kind of just got to hit a straight that we can like really open her up. If you're an engine breaker it's gonna feel like uh, kind of like a waste of time to be completely honest. Um, I just don't feel like she revs up high enough to really warrant it. The seat position is very comfortable. The first time I rode this bike, I honestly didn't, uh, I didn't think it sounded very aggressive. But I think now that I'm actually riding it a little more aggressively than I did before, uh, I'm actually really starting to hear that that growl. From the engine now this is a bike i will say as far as the sound uh it's a bike that you're gonna want to put a slip on <laughs> immediately i mean the uh, stock exhaust on this uh on this ktr edition uh doesn't quite do it for me uh so i'd say if you did uh pull the trigger on purchasing this bike uh, a slip-on is a must, um, but you could say that about most sport bikes. I'm going to blip the throttle a little bit. I mean, it, honestly, it still kind of feels like I'm doing more work than I should be as far as downshifting is concerned, but we're going to give it a little here. Another girl here. You know, honestly, I must say I'm having fun. I'm having fun on this bike. I wasn't expecting it. Like I said, my daily is a GSX S750. Uh, definitely working with a lot more horsepower, but. 
I could definitely see this one uh, in my garage. Like I said, it's more comfortable than the 636. It has does have less power. Stops on a dime. Oh, hit a bug. Giving a few throttle blips there. Now I'm hanging out in higher RPMs, it does feel a little bit more warranted. Before it really didn't feel like it was necessary, but. Good amount of control. Got a good lean in. Slow it down just a little bit. I gotta say, I'm having fun. Now, I will say, as far as uh, if you're a taller person, uh, and you have big feet like I do, um, you might have some issues as far as the clutch pedal is concerned, or I mean your shifter pedal. Um, it does feel a bit small for my liking. Uh, so I mean, if they have a, an aftermarket uh, set, as far as like a rear set or something like that, you might want to go for that. Um, but if you're a shorter person, you're going to do just fine, to be completely honest. Lift the throttle a little bit. A little bit of a bump. As far as the suspension, um, I would say it's pretty smooth for the most part. Uh, she pretty much glides over bumps pretty well. Um, the 636 as well as the uh, Ninja 1000 uh, both felt very smooth as far as the suspension is concerned. And like I said before, this bike is very, very comfortable. Uh, it sits a little more upright than the 636. Um, yeah, I mean, if you uh, if you're you know looking to get back on a sport bike and you're older, you maybe have some few back issues or something like that. Uh, Listen to that wind, listen to it. As far as the weight on the bike is concerned, I do feel like I'm getting pushed around a little bit, but it is a windy day and that is uh, just a fact of life on motorcycles. But, you know, it's not anything that I'm, I, I'm really uh, terribly uncomfortable with. I'm very, very used to a naked bike, uh, so just the, the feeling of just having a fairing in front of me uh, is quite enjoyable, I must say. Because uh, I could tell I would definitely be feeling the brunt of this wind a little bit more uh, if I didn't have it. 
Um, as far as the wind chain is concerned, it does seem pretty sturdy. I've seen especially uh, on the Kawasaki Ninja 1000, uh, was, there's a lot of shake with it. And, uh, you know, I, I found myself checking the screws when I got back just to make sure that they were, you know, nice and tight. But everything seems to be in place on this bike. I don't see, I don't feel any shakes or anything like that. And, you know, and as you can see, you know, we're making good passes on traffic. She doesn't feel, uh, let's say just for, for what we're doing, she doesn't feel underpowered. Like I said before, if you're used to a more higher CC bike, uh, it might feel a little underpowered to you. Um, but honestly, all I can say to that is just give it more gas. <laughs> Very smooth shifts. I mean, she just, she clicks so easily. It's, 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 it's butter really. Like I said, so far we are having some fun. Now, honestly, uh, I'm in the market for a track bike personally, so I wouldn't exactly say I, that this is something that I would want to take to the track. If, this, if you're looking for something more track oriented, you're going to want to go for, I would say, the 636 or the 1000. Um, but like I said, if you're getting back into it after a long time, after a long hiatus, or if you're looking for a first bike that you're not only going to get rid of in like the first two weeks, uh, I'd say this would be, this is worth a shot. This is worth the money. It's comfortable. It is user friendly. It's got some get up and zip to her when you need it. Or what more could you honestly ask for? Other than that, I'd say I will catch you guys on the flip side. I'm going to bring it on home. Bring this puppy back to its owner like i said <laughs> honestly like i said i could see it in my garage potentially uh so i mean it's gonna be it's gonna be sad to see her go but it's never goodbye it's just see you later you guys stay safe out there folks this is kaiji dash signing off